Hi guys, um, my name is Elisa or The Diamond Stitcher. I go by on Instagram and YouTube. Um, I wanted to bring you another video today and I wanted to do a little post review on this kit I just finished from Diamond Art Club. I'll also do a segment of the video showing you how to seal a diamond painting. And then I'll finish this painting off by painting the border um, and showing you how I do that and how I trim down the size and how I display my diamond paintings. Uh, so first, I'll do the post review. So this kit is called Always. Uh, the artist is Sarah Richter. And of course, it's a diamond art club. Um, it measured about 51 centimeters to 64 centimeters and it's a round drill. Um, she has one special diamond in it, uh, in these gold accents here in her jewelry and on her arm here, some in her earring as well. Um, I believe they call that the Electro Diamond. Um, it's a gold metallic drill. Now, I, I used to always just buy squares. I felt like I preferred the detail of a square diamond painting over a round. I enjoyed square diamond paintings more. Um, that's just what my go-to was. Now, if I saw an image in round that I absolutely loved, I did get it, but generally speaking, I stuck to squares. But I think this canvas has converted me. Um, this is the first round from Diamond Art Club that I believe is completely new, um, upgraded a kit um, from the canvas to the drills. Now these drills, let me just take a closer look. Yeah, they are the new 26 facets. I actually didn't even notice when I was diamond painting it. Yeah, it looks like they all are the new um, that I can see here, new 26 facet diamonds. And what that means basically is the more facets, the more uh, edges or, or angles there are for the light to bounce off of, and it's gonna make it a lot more sparkly. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the video, if I move it around maybe a little bit, all that sparkle, it's just amazing. Just amazing. Um, the quality of the drills was great as always. I, I've never really had a problem with any of my Diamond Art Club kits. Um, of all the ones I've done in the last two years, I ran out of drills once and Diamond Art Club uh, sent me them uh, free of charge. Uh, that is covered in the oops policy, the warranty um, over here in the corner. Sorry if it's out of frame. No, I think it's in. Okay, so the warranty there, the, the support email's written down there for you. Um, if you do have any problems with any of your Diamond Art Club canvases or run out of drills, you just shoot them an email. They respond fairly quickly and uh, always resolve the issue, which is great. That's why I like uh, working with Diamond Art Club. Uh, the image is rendered beautifully. The color variations or gradients uh, look really good. Uh, overall, really happy. I had no problems with the glue at all. Oh, I just noticed I missed three diamonds there. I'll fill that in. Um, no problem with the glue at all. Um, what I noticed is now they're more careful, at least in this one, about how much glue is overlapping on the edges and it's barely anything. I can just feel a very tiny bit. So that's nice because um, I have pets, you know, my cat and my dog and their hair and it can get stuck in that glue. Um, so that's nice that, that it, it's not overhanging very much at all anymore. Um, yeah, so that's my very quick and dirty uh, review of this painting. Absolute joy to work on, no complaints at all. Uh, I would recommend it. I love this size. As I said, it's about a 51 by 64 centimeter. And I noticed Diamond Art Club is coming out with more around that size, uh, which I'm absolutely here for because it's very difficult for me to diamond paint now because of my injury and nerve damage and my function, my loss of function, strength of my arms. Um, I find this size is perfect. It fits on my table well. Um, I don't have to move it side to side too much. It just works better for my setup. Um, so I'm really happy to see that they are releasing more uh, art in that size and, and the renderings turning out beautifully. So what I'm gonna do now um, is show you how I seal a diamond painting. Now I don't seal all my diamond paintings. In fact, I got rid of my sealer and had to buy a new one just for this video. Um, 
Because with Diamond Art Club, you don't need to seal. Uh, their glue is super sticky and their materials are very high quality that sealing is not necessary. In fact, sealing will void that lifetime warranty. The lifetime warranty, uh, if you're the original purchaser of a Diamond Art Club painting, will cover, you know, things such as drills maybe popping off, you know, down the road and you need some replacements or, or uh, things like that. If you seal it, they void that warranty. Now I'm of the opinion once I'm done my diamond painting and you know I I don't need I don't need any more warranty um, I'm fine with sealing um, I hang my diamond paintings in the bathroom and the reason is because my husband is the decorator and uh, and that would turn into a, a pretty quick argument if I wanted to to put up these diamond paintings all over our, our tiny one bed apartment. So I I have a space in the bathroom. I'll, I'll show you later uh, where I display my diamond paintings. And what I do is when I finish a new one, I'll go through the process of painting the border. You know, completely finishing it finishing it so it looks nice, and then I'll hang it up. When I'm done my next painting, I'll swap it in. So I'm constantly rotating what's hanging in that spot, um, which I like because I like seeing the art for a little while once I've done it. Um, it's also beautiful and um, I hate just putting them away once I'm done and moving on to the next. So I like rotating them and sometimes I will uh, put an older one up, like one I did uh, six months, no, Probably a year ago, I actually have hanging right now at Dimitri Milan, um, just because I was in between canvases and then I wanted to display. So um, the ones that I don't have hanging, I right now, I put them in a portfolio, though it's not that great. It's just a big portfolio. It would fit this in it fine um, and it zippers, but the problem is the diamond painting shifts in it. So I don't really like that system. So actually, I'm I'm in the process of coming up with something different uh, to store them aside from hanging them. So if you have any ideas, any tips how you store them, uh, storing them in boxes doesn't really work for us because we live in a small one bed apartment and we do have a storage locker, but that's where my stash is along with some other stuff we need to store. So I don't really have space to store a bunch of diamond paintings in boxes. So if you have an idea for me, uh, let me know down in the comments. But without further ado, I'm gonna show you what you need to seal a diamond painting. Now I'm filming in a different area, so it shouldn't be shaky at all. Um, I hope the diamond painting is still in frame. I am just over five feet, so I actually can't see the phone from where I'm standing to see, but I'm pretty sure it's in frame. Anyways, what I do, what I need to seal a diamond painting. So I use foam brushes. I get these uh, on a assorted pack on Amazon. You can find them in Michaels too. Um, probably the dollar store is probably the cheapest way to go. I'm sure they have them in their craft section. Uh, it doesn't really matter what size. Um, it will depend on how big the uh, um, sealer is, what kind of container it comes in. Now, the one that I purchased um, is this. Um, when I was a new diamond painter, this is the brand that was recommended the most for one that doesn't dull the sparkle and one that won't crack and yellow over time. Um, so that's the one I went with. I used to have a big can, but um, when I stopped sealing them, I got rid of it. This is nice. This came from Amazon. I will link it. It's a good size because when you're sealing, you really don't need that much. Um, so this is, a, this is a, a perfect size to have on hand. So this is Minwax Polyacrylic uh, Clear Crystal Top Coat. Now you wanna make sure when you buy it that you get the clear gloss. They have a satin finish and they have, um, I think a matte finish. They have a few different finishes, but what you want is the clear gloss. Um, if you use the other ones, you'll probably dull the sparkle. Um, but with this one, I have found that um, that it doesn't dull it at all. Um, so I'll probably use this small foam brush because this tin is very small. So I'll put the big one to the side. I have, I just use a Ziploc that I put down on the counter to put the a wet brush on if, if I need to rest it down. Um, and then I just have a knife here to pop open the, the paint can. So I'm gonna put this to the side and I'm actually going to quickly grab a damp cloth as well. 
So bear with me. You're going to hear the tap running for a second. That's a benefit of living in a small apartment here. You, uh, everything is close. It's wringing the, the towel out a little bit. Um, and I will show you why I want a damp towel as we go here. So I'm going to just give this a bit of a shake and pop the top. As you can see, it's uh, a clear, well, I guess it looks more white in here, but it does go on clear, very thin liquid. There is a bit of a chemical smell, so if, if that type of thing irritates you, um, you can wear a bit of a mask. Make sure the windows are open when you're using it. There are aerosol types um, of this product. I don't like the aerosols because those can be quite damaging when you breathe them into your lungs. Whereas this, this uh, is less, is less, I don't think toxic is the word I'm looking for, but um, you know what I mean. Aerosols are, are easier to breathe in and, and can irritate the lungs. So what I do is you pick a corner to start in. I'm actually gonna start at the top, that way I'm not getting this on my shirt. Now the, you know what, I'm gonna use the big one because it's gonna give me more surface area on here. I just have to squeeze it in the can a little bit. So I just dip the foam brush in, make sure my camera here, dip it in, just kind of wipe a bit of the excess off and then I start in the corner and I kind of um, note where I'm, I'm starting because I don't want to miss a spot. And I just go back and forth very lightly Sometimes if you have too much on the, the brush, um, it will come, and I'll try to do it here, it will come off uh, with some white bubbling. You can kind of see it if I do it up here, that white bubbling. Try to bring it up closer to the camera. Bit of white bubbling there. That's what the damp cloth is for. Um, when you're sealing a painting, you actually don't need this sealer to remain on top of the diamonds. What you want is, is for it to seal between the diamonds. Um, that will seal the, the diamonds to the glue on the canvas. Just gives it a little extra security. And by wiping it off the top, I'm not losing any sparkle at all. Now, if I was to leave it on the top, I don't think it would make much of a difference. But uh, when I was a new diamond painter, that's what I was taught and that's what I do. Um, because like I said, if you do put too much on your brush, you'll notice uh, some white bubbling. It will go, go away, it will dry, but just to help it along, I just wipe it off the top. This will hopefully help dust and uh, cat hair from sticking to that glue in between the round diamonds with round diamonds. Um, that's the one uh, drawback is you will notice um, space around the diamonds. Um, cat hair can, or, or fuzz can, can attach to that glue. So by sealing it like this, you're, you're covering that glue hopefully preventing any, any unwanted stuff from attaching. And again, I'm just gonna wipe it off the top because I don't need the sealer right on the top. And, and that's, I think, where a lot of people, I'm just gonna rinse the cloth. Uh, you'll hear the water again. A lot of the reason people don't like sealing is because uh, they say it dulls the sparkle. This is one way to prevent that. As you can see, um, I'm not losing any sparkle. Oops, there's a big string there. It's from my cross stitching, I guess. Again, with Diamond Art Club, you really don't need to seal the diamond painting. Um, Diamond paintings that don't have very good glue, you'll, you'll find diamonds will pop off. That's when sealing comes in handy. Um, 
with high quality quick kits like this. It's not necessary. It's just an added extra step. Some people um, I've seen comment about um, hanging diamond paintings in the bathroom if the humidity would affect it. And that's kind of why I, I had decided to seal um, back when I started, just in case. But I've had diamond paintings hanging up there now, not sealed for usually about three months is the longest, I think, uh, because I rotate them. And I've not had an issue with any of the ones that I haven't sealed. But I wanted to make this video for some of you who, who ask, how do you seal a diamond painting? And uh, I wanted to show you a product that works uh, well, um, that was re recommended to me quite a bit and that I've had success with. So I'm just gonna go over and wipe the rest of the area here. Now you don't have to wipe it off like this. You can leave it on. Um, I can't remember if I've tried, um, you hear the water again here for a second. I can't remember if I've um, sealed the diamond painting without wiping it off. I think, I think the first one I did, I don't think it affected the sparkle at all. Once it dries again, you wanna make sure that the um, sealer you get is a clear gloss. You don't want matte, you don't want satin. Both of those will, will dull the sparkle, just the way it's finished. So that's how I seal. Now, I usually leave it here for a couple hours to dry uh, before I hang it up or uh, roll it up. Um, I have rolled a diamond painting after I've sealed it. I uh, roll it with the diamonds out and I haven't had a problem at all with cracking. Uh, that's probably because I wiped the sealer off the top, so it's just down in the drills. See any little bubbles that I'm seeing that I missed, I just go back and uh, to wipe them down and, and they go away. And that's just from excess, excess sealer. So I'm gonna put this away and close up my um, tin here. Now with the foam brush, I will rinse it off under the sink uh, just with some warm water, let it air dry. I keep using them until they're no longer usable. Um, there's no point making them one time use, that's a waste. Um, yeah. Let me just wipe, put this to the side and I'm going to put the lid on it just so it doesn't, um, just so I'm not breathing in that chemical smell here. You're gonna hear, I'm gonna actually pause the video for a second because I'm gonna bang this so the lid shuts. I don't want to uh, hurt your ears, so give me a second here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I paint the border. Um, this is still damp from the sealing process, so I'm gonna be careful. You, you can wait a few hours, like I said, till it dries. It probably doesn't even need a few hours. Um, and then paint it. I am impatient, so I'm going to do it all at once. So what I use is this black acrylic paint. I got this at Michael's. I just went to their acrylic paint aisle and looked at the most cost-effective, biggest um, container. So I get my money's worth, and this is just a liquid art ready to pour. Why I like this one is it finishes and it's jet black. Why I liked it is it has a bit of a glossy finish. I like the look of that on, on the edges. Um, I used to use one that was more of a, a matte, a dull look, and, and I, I thought the glossy one was a little bit better. So if you don't mind gloss, this is uh, a really good brand I recommend. And it's lasted me two years and it's probably half full still. And I've probably done all the diamond paintings I've done, except a few I've painted the black border. What I do, because I don't have kids, I don't have paint supplies, I just pour some on a Ziploc bag so it doesn't bleed through on my kitchen counter. Then I use a small foam brush. I use a smaller edge because it's, uh, you get a little bit more precision. Now, I don't tape my diamonds to prevent the paint from getting on them. For the most part, um, I don't have a problem with that and I'll show you how I do it. Um, to avoid that problem. This one won't be so noticeable because the, the outside is black. The outside drills, it's a, it's a dark diamond painting. I'm gonna turn this as we go here. So what I do is I 
just put the paint on the very edge. You don't need much, I just do a little bit. So I got it on the edge here. Okay, and then I, I dab some excess off like that. What I do, I'll start in the middle here. I make sure the edge of this foam brush is just up against the diamonds ever so slightly. And then what I do is very slowly, very carefully, just pull the foam brush down. I got quiet there because I need to concentrate. Um, so that's what I do. So barely any paint ever gets on the diamonds. And if it does, I just take my damp cloth and just wipe it right away and, and, and it's gone. So what I do is I go around the whole canvas doing the edge like this first. Um, and then I fill in afterwards. So let's do that. So I'm gonna turn this. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I've dipped it again in the paint, made sure there's not too much, because that's the thing. If there's too much when I put my brush down at first, it's going to it's going to pool a little bit and create a bit of an excess that can get on the diamonds. And then I just very slowly and my hand, because of my nerve damage, my hand jumps a lot and I'm still able to do this very slowly with with good precision. And again, I'm just wanting to make sure that the black paint is up as close to the diamonds as possible. And um, if there's any white showing, I'll just go by like there. Just make sure it's... I tried using a small paintbrush. I, I got some from the dollar store. I found that messier because the bristles. Um, I found it didn't... I found I got more paint on the drills that way, so... I've stuck with this little foam brush and I always have good success. Again, if, if I do get any on the drills, I just wipe it off. And here we're getting down to some light color. So you can see when I do it this way, I'll try to bring it up to the camera. When I do it this way, I um, it's nice up there and there and there's no paint on the diamonds. I'm going to flip it and do this part. It's probably been about 10 minutes since I sealed it and it's actually dry to the touch too. Um, probably because I do wipe down diamonds. With the white drills or the lighter colored drills, I am a tad bit more careful. because I, um, I want it to look nice, you know? And, and diamond paintings are supposed to be viewed from a bit of a distance. So if you do get a little bit of paint on, on a diamond somewhere, like I've just gotten a bit too much there. I didn't wipe off enough excess. So I'll show you, I take my damp cloth. I'm not left-handed, so bear with me here. And I just wipe down the edge a little bit. And it's gone. Sorry, I uh, I guess I could have had some music playing in the background, but um, I actually don't mind the silence. I find our days are so filled with noise. Sometimes silence is just peaceful. I can hear I can hear my pets breathing. I can hear the the birds outside. The wind blowing. It's just a nice, um, silence is nice sometimes. Sometimes that's what you need. So one more edge here. Again, just dip it in my paint. Take off the excess and pull it down here. Once you've done this a few times, you, um, just like with anything, practice makes perfect, right? So once you do it a few times, you'll, you'll, you'll learn how to hold the brush, how much pressure to apply, how much paint to use or not use. It will become easier. Now, I do, as you can see, I don't bother removing this legend because when I paint the border, I always use black paint, so it covers it completely. Um, some people do use um, 
nail polish remover with acetone and they say that it can take off all this writing quite nicely. Um, if you were going to paint the border with a light color, I probably would um, try and remove or uh, or at least lighten to a degree the printing on the on the white part. Otherwise, you'll see it bleed through. But with dark paints, you're not going to see it anyway. So there's no point wasting my time and energy removing it. Today, uh, I'm filming this on Sunday, March, what is it, March 5th. It's actually my stepson's birthday today. Unfortunately, my husband's working, so so I wasn't able to, to go. They live um, about an hour away from us, and I can't drive um, that far. Even being a passenger um, is quite difficult for me for that length of a drive, but it's his birthday today, so we'll be celebrating that next weekend. Now, I'm doing this on my kitchen island. Um, I used to put newspapers down, but now I'm just very careful. Again, my, uh, <laughs> my motto is, uh, well, I don't know if it's a motto, but um, why put extra work into it, right? Find the, the shortest, easiest way, and, and, and that's the way I'll do it. Save time, save energy. When you deal with uh, any kind of chronic condition, um, energy is, is, is money, really, and um, the time it takes me to do certain things that, you know, some, someone my age that's healthy is probably, I would say, three times more energy required. Okay, so now I've gotten um, the paint down along the whole outside of my diamond painting. You can kind of see that. So what I do next is I fill in the sides. I, I, paint, I paint the rest of it. Now, you can lay newspaper down on your counter or you could even uh, pull out some wax paper and put it underneath and paint right up to those scalloped edges. I don't do that because I trim the edges. Um, I just don't need edges that big. Uh, so I trim them down. Um, so that's what I'm gonna show you here. So when I paint the edge, let me start up here so it's easier again. I go from that line of the diamonds and I kind of just paint down like that. Make sure everything's covered. Now I usually do two coats. I find that uh, one coat is almost near perfect, but um, over certain uh, areas you might see a, a bit of white from the brush stroke. So I find two coats is, is good, it's quick, um, and it provides good coverage. Now by the time I'm, I'm done the whole thing and back over here, this part should be dry because I'm not using a lot of paint. You don't need a lot. All that's going to take, uh, all that's going to do is take longer to dry. So you don't, you don't need a lot. And, and a little goes a long way with these foam brushes too, because they're foam, they um, absorb the paint. So you can go quite a long way with, with um, the brush here. When I start seeing white streaky lines is when I usually add a bit more paint to my brush to get a bit of a better coverage. That way, when I go through the second time, I'm basically just doing a, a little bit of touch-ups. I don't need to um, paint large areas. And I'll show you the coverage uh, in a minute going over the legend. Completely covers it. I don't want to get paint on me either, but it completely covers it, no problem at all. When I'm done uh, painting this border, what I'll do is I'll let it dry for a little bit. So I'll pause the video and then I'll come back and show you how I trim the edges off. I often will ask my husband to help me because it is, it is difficult for me. Um, but I have what I use is an X-Acto blade and a big craft ruler. Um, as long as the X-Acto blade is nice and sharp, it's, it's actually pretty easy. Um, but because I lose strength in my arms, 
Um, it, it can be a little harder for me to, to push, push down enough pressure to cut through the canvas. Um, so I will try my best to um, film that along with this and add it in there. And then I will show you um, the spot that I hang it in and, and what I, uh, how I do it. I will try to link these products uh, in the description, but again, I just went to the Michaels Craft Store, looked at their acrylic paint aisle, um, grabbed something that looked right, and thankfully it was. And I grabbed a pack of foam brushes there. This foam brush is reusable. I just run it again under warm water. I don't even use soap, uh, just warm water. Let it air dry and, and I use it again until it's not usable anymore or it's not doing the uh, desired thing. So there, I've uh, now gone all the way around. What I'm gonna do is let this actually dry for about 10 minutes before I put the next coat on. If you put the second coat on too soon, it's just gonna lift the paint that you have down. Um, so if it still looks wet, wait, wait until it looks dry and then put on that second coat. Um, so I'll pause the video here. I'll put on the second coat off of camera, let you see, and then we'll um, go over how I trim the edges. So I put on the second layer of paint off camera just to um, save you some boring uh, watch time there. Um, so what I did is I just went around and covered up any little white uh, spots, streaks that I, that I had. Uh, as you can kind of see there with the light, it's a bit of a glossy paint that I really like. I just find it, it adds to the sparkle and just makes, makes the way I finish it uh, look a little better. So what I do next, um, again, this is this is hard for me if, um, I usually get my husband to do it, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to do it. Um, yeah, so I have this big craft knife, uh, not knife, this uh, ruler. Um, I just got it at Michael's. It looks like it's about a 17 inch ruler. Um, I think I got it for this exact reason. I can't quite remember. I've had it for a while. And then I use an X-Acto knife and I make sure that the blade is really sharp. Um, it works really good the first time around. If it dulls a little bit, you have to apply a bit more pressure to the canvas to, to cut through it. So um, I've, I've um, broken off the top and I have a fresh piece here. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you how I trim the edges off my canvas. Now, as I was doing this and thinking, you know, I said earlier that I I, um, I like to take the short way and, and, and conserve as much energy as I can. And uh, cutting a canvas like this is actually quite the opposite. Um, I think on my next painting, I'm actually gonna, gonna try leaving it with the scalloped edges and see how that looks. Um, yeah, so for now, let me show you how I cut this. So it's a bit tricky. What I used to do is I used to take a silver Sharpie uh, because silver um, appears nicely over the black. I used to take a silver Sharpie and um, I would draw a line uh, down here to mark my edge where I wanted to cut. But to cut it straight, I had to use the ruler anyway. So I've skipped that step. I like to um, make my width from the edge here to that line, it's probably about a centimeter, maybe more. Probably a little less than an inch, we'll say. So what I do is I, I line up the edge of my diamonds with the line that I want um, that I that I want to cut at. And that will give me whatever I'm lining up here is gonna be the width uh, that I'm gonna um, uh, end up with, if that makes any sense at all. It is now two o'clock in the afternoon. I've surpassed um, the level of activity I usually do on a given day and my brain is starting to not work. Uh, so let's see how I get through this. So um, as I said, it's a little bit tricky. 
I often will get my husband to help me. If you have someone to help you, it's 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 nice, especially if somebody can hold the ruler. Um, so I hold it down, make sure it's held really secure so that you know I'm not gonna move it if I if I push on it a little too much. I take my sharp exacto blade and I cut slowly. And you can see that cut through really nicely. It's a nice and sharp exacto knife. I actually didn't need much pressure at all, which is great. Um, so I just move down the canvas like that. I make sure that I line it up the exact width that it was up there. Make sure that this lines up. I overlap it, overlap it a bit so that it lines up nicely. And I do the same thing. I go around the whole painting doing this. When you're moving, you just want to move move uh, carefully so you're not um, moving the ruler and changing the dimensions. Then, then your edge would be a little bit wonky, which is fine. Uh, you can go back, and I leave I leave this bit because you know if it is a bit wonky and I need need to straighten something out, I've got room. So I'm going to do the exact same thing uh, down here. I I do the same width. Um, over the whole whole canvas. It actually isn't that hard. Um, what it will do to me is my arm's not gonna work um, probably for the rest of the day, but I wanted to get this video made um, because I often post my finishes and have people ask me how, how I do it. So instead of um, trying to explain it in words, I think it's much easier for some people just to see a video and see how you do it. Now, if I'm going to cut here, what, what you might see is it bunch a bit. So sometimes what I do is I'll start a little bit lower because it just, see even there it bunched a bit. It just, um, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, uh, but what I'll do is I'll turn it back, put this down, and go that way. Just makes it a little bit um, easier. If I had three hands, yeah, life would be a lot easier. But again, if you have someone to help you, that's when it comes in handy just to hold the ruler, hold the diamond painting down so it's not uh, moving, uh, so you don't get an uneven cut. I'm gonna go down here. That's the one edge. I'm just, uh, even now my arm is uh, not cooperating. Let me just shake it out a little bit very hard um, living with a condition, a syndrome, an injury, and disability, whatever, um, where you can't just do normal things, normal humans should be able to do. Um, I can't even explain how frustrating it is. But nevertheless, I persist. They say the show must go on. There's a very fine line between um, persevering, pushing through, challenging yourself, and um, doing too much, and you end up just unable to move. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the words to describe exactly what happens, but um, basically unable to move is probably the best description that I, I have here. Almost done. Bear with me a couple more minutes and then what I'll do is show you a little bit closer. This is a knee problem. Now I'm having trouble putting pressure on the exacto because of my arm. I'm just going to cut off this last little bit here. Just a little bit. Make sure I get it straight. 
if I had a second diamond painting, I was going to do cut, you know, back to back. See, as you can see, the pressure I'm applying isn't good anymore. So that exacto dulls quite easily, probably because I'm doing it on this marble or cement counter. So it dulls the blade pretty quickly. So if I was going to do, <laughs> if I was going to do um, a second one, I would, I would crack this exacto off again and. Um, So it's fresh. There we go. Okay, let me shake my arm out again. In some of my videos, you might see me moving my arms or hands around funnily, funny or hear, hear uh, noises. It's usually just me repositioning myself because my arm has gone dead. So here we are, this is my finish. So this is the width that I like to do, um, cut the borders at. Try to hold it up here as you can see it's glossy it's a nice glossy black paint um it's about uh just shorter than an inch maybe three quarters um of a border there all around um i find cutting with the exacto knife and the ruler gives a nice straight edge versus scissors can be a little bit wonky sometimes um like up here i don't know if you can see it there's a little bit of white here what I'll do is I'll take a black Sharpie and I'll just, um, let me grab it. You can either trim it off with your scissors or you can just take a black Sharpie and I just color it there rather than getting some more paint out and getting a brush dirty and, and that kind of thing. I just, um, cover anything after I've done the two coats, anything that's, you know, sorry, anything that's still, um, bothering me I just run the sharpie over it's a quick fix nobody's gonna notice so I'm going to again pause this video I'm gonna put the clips I use on it because I struggle with that quite a bit I'm gonna hang it up because I also struggle with that and then I will show you um, what it looks like in my space and here she is uh, we are now in my bathroom um, it's a small bathroom so I might sound a little bit more echoey we also don't have a window in here, so it's just the ceiling light that you're seeing. Um, here she is, this is what I do. So this black rod at the top here um, that you can see, this is a curtain rod. I got it on Amazon. Um, I just looked for a small adjustable one. This one can widen quite a bit. Um, I widened it a little bit to fit this space. Um, and then initially what I bought was these O-hooks are called. It's just a clip that clips on to the diamond painting and an O-hook, a zero. Now, what I did was I forgot to put those hooks through the curtain rod before I, or my husband, secured the curtain rod to the wall. And I don't feel like taking it apart and just to do that. So I went and I ordered some S-hooks. These are the S-hooks. Um, it's hard to see against the painting. Um, they're, I believe they're shower hooks. I just typed in S hooks to Amazon and this is what popped up. Um, so I had to add this, uh, cause I didn't want to take it off the wall. You can get curtain rods that are a little easier that are not one piece like this. Um, curtain rods that you can actually bring the whole rod down and put it back up on its holders. Uh, but this is the one I went with. And then these are the, the O hooks. So it's just a little clip. Try to bring that closer here. It's just a little clip. Um, get on Amazon. I think it actually came in a pack of 25. I only kept about 10 of them to have on hand. Um, if you have a group of diamond painting friends or people who live close to you, you guys can go in, um, pay a little bit less, but they weren't expensive at all. So I just clip the diamond painting or the clip to the diamond painting. I do this. Um, on the table or on the ground. I can't hold my arms up for any length of time. Even just that little bit there, my arm has gone dead. Um, as you might be able to tell, I also sometimes get short of breath. Because the nature of the nerves that are compressed in my neck and my chest, I, um, I deal with shortness of breath. That in itself can be quite debilitating. Um, even just speaking, it's, uh, it can be hard. So anyways, 
this is what I do. So every time I finish a new diamond painting, I will paint the edges black so it looks nice and hang it up here. I usually keep it up here. I don't know, these days it takes me a couple months usually to finish a diamond painting. Um, in the last, in the last four weeks, three weeks, I've been able to diamond paint a little more. Um, cross stitch is actually becoming too hard for me now. Um, so I'm back to diamond painting a little more. Hopefully I'll get some, some quicker finishes. I'm also focusing on smaller sized kits like this, what I consider kind of the, a good size, about 50 by 61, I think I said, or 71. Um, yeah, so hopefully I will have more content. If you have any questions about how I did this or anything in this video, um, let me know. I can't, I don't think I can exactly link these clips I used. Uh, it was quite a while ago, but I'll try my best. I'll, I'll, I'll link something similar. Um, again, my links are going to be to Amazon Canada, but um, if you type in the keyword that I, I tell you I typed in, it should pop up with similar items in your, in your country. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching to the end. I hope this was informative. Um, I will work on another whip and chat next, I believe. I'm trying to think of what else I kind of had planned. Um, I think I'll do a whip and chat next um, and Diamond Paint along with y'all. Uh, I just started a new one, Fairy Lights, also by Diamond Art Club. Um, posted the start photo in, uh, on my Instagram feed. Uh, let me know what you're working on. Are you participating in any of the events? Uh, going on. I know Lindsay has the em uh, emeralds along, I believe it is. I'll unofficially participate in that. I'll, I'll post along with everyone, but uh, I don't really enter for prizes. Um, I let the newcomers uh, win the prize prizes. It's always exciting. So let me know what you're working on. Are you participating in any events? Um, let me know how you finish your diamond paintings. Um, yeah, let me know all the things. I hope you have a good night, day, afternoon, whatever time it is uh, that you're watching this, and I will see you very soon. Bye. Bye.